Good morning, my name is Leroy Schultz. I'm the Education Director for the Tualatin Valley Chapter, the Northwest Steel Hitters. And with me this morning is Mike Myrick, who is also the Education Director for the Northwest Steel Hitters. We're going to put together a tank for the classrooms uh, for the Fish Eggs to Fry program uh, so that uh, you as a teacher or educator can uh, also have this ready to go uh, in your classroom uh, with uh, ease. And we've already placed some gravel in it for you and we usually place an inch to two inches of pea gravel or small gravel in the bottom of the tank so that the eggs when they are placed in here will settle into uh, the little grooves and valleys in the uh, rocks just as they would simulate that uh, or be that way in the river. Next I think we'll put together our pump which is one of the most important parts and I have a pump but we need to make sure that we have a clean filter system going with it. Uh, this year we have some new filtering materials that we put in the face of this. And just put the cover over it from getting into the pump and uh, getting chewed up. So we end up with it like this and generally we place this inside of our tank so that we'll be able to pump the water out. It's a submersible pump which is really nice and then we'll run our hoses, electrical hose out for connections to our power strip and from here we're going to place a hose on it but <clears throat> one of the problems we have with our hoses is that they're really a tight fit to get in here and with the plastic as it is sometimes it needs to be expanded slightly so I'm going to ask Mike if he would warm that up for me as you can see, Mike is warming up our end of uh, our pipe force here, our tubing. Uh, he has a steamer, and which really works well. If you don't have that available, what I usually bring is a nice thermos of water, uh, of hot water, or ha uh, hot top tap water works very well for this. Just enough to let it expand a little bit, bring it over, and then when we put it on, it just slides on really nice and smoothly into the pump. We secure it with our radiator clamps. That'll work just fine. Okay. Then I have to run my hose back up through the hole we have in the end of the tank and over to our chiller unit. Most of our chiller units <coughs> have an in and an out side to them and it's already labeled for us. So all I have to do is take my clamp, radiator clamp, put it on my hose and slide it onto it. It has veins on it that help hold it in place so there won't be any leaks. Secure it in place and we are ready to go. Our tank now has a pump and it's ready to pump water out but we need to get the water back into it so I'm going to use the rest of our hose but we have about nine feet of hose here which is a little bit too much to reach this distance so I'm going to cut it and that allows us to have plenty of hose to reach from our tank back to our chiller unit and in doing so we'll be able to place it on the end of our J pipe which is our return. The nice thing about the J pipe is that you can adjust your flow into your tank so it can go up or down or off to the side and it also helps quiet the return water coming in because sometimes it's kind of noisy and teachers certainly like to have the noise down in their classroom. Looks great. All right, and then with this, again, we have to take it, put it inside of our tank, and get it in there, and we can adjust it that way and have our water flowing in one direction or the other. Take our radiator clamp and put it on it and secure this to the other side of our chiller unit. That looks really good. Okay, now we're going to, we have our pump and we have the water going to come out, go into our chiller unit and then from the chiller unit back to our tank. And again, this is really nice to have. It keeps the splash down, noise down for the teachers. We need to go through and make sure we have plenty of oxygen coming into our tank. So we usually put an air stone in our tank and in doing so that most tanks will have a small hole at one end. Place our air stone in it, bring the hose up through, 
and connect it to an air pump that will be set off to the side. Next thing we want to do is make sure we have a thermometer in our tank. That way we can check the temperatures and it's one of the things the students do almost every day is come back to check the temperature. So we'll place this along the side so that students will be able to see the temperature in our tank. Next thing we would do would be to <clears throat> go through and put some water into our tank. All right, I'd like to talk a little bit about our chiller units that we have. Uh, this particular chiller unit is very, very easy to operate. Um, we have uh, new digital setups on them. Uh, they allow us to uh, move the temperatures up and down. And Mike's going to turn it, plug it in for me and turn on the power strip. And as you can see, it's coming up and showing the present temperature of the air that's inside. We don't have water in it at the moment, but if we did, it would be showing 72 or 73 degrees. If we want to reset the temperature, we simply hit set and it will then flash for us and shows us it was set at 50 degrees. If we want that to go up, we would push up to the temperature we would like and then go back to set, and hold that, and then it would set at that temperature and try to bring the water down to that particular temperature. If we want it to move one way or the other, we simply go back, push set once more, and it will flash for us. And if we wanted the temperature down, we would push down to the temperature we want, and then push set once again. Um, usually they are between 49 and 54 degrees uh, set on their chiller units. Uh, they vary the temperature uh, up a little bit from 49 degrees depending upon the amount of time that they want to uh, work with those eggs. The warmer the temperature, uh, the sooner they will uh, mature and uh, become fry alvins and then fry. And then, but the colder the uh, temperature, the longer they will be able to keep them in the classroom.